Hello everyone, welcome to another Lose Redo's. I saw you on TV. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, today was a very exciting day. We did our first uh, Staten Island Community television show. Um, also titled Lose Redo's. That's correct, also. It's like a uh, kind of like it's, a talk show, yeah. almost. I'm talking yeah. about your YouTube videos. We show the videos, we, we go into a little history about it. Um, we're going to have some guest chefs on. There's some good things planned. And I'm there too. And Carl is in the control room. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Here's what we're going to do today. Zoe Blue sent me an email. So this video is for you. Zoe you Blue. wanted to do a... It uh, rhymes. Why not? Do I? This, this video is for you, Zoe Blue. There you go. It rhymes. It rhymes. Um... I did a meatloaf leftover video. It's one of the early ones. Way back when. But I never showed you how I make the video. And oh, you mean uh, meatloaf? Uh, meatloaf. What did I say? The video. Oh, the video. We showed so, you how to. Well, we didn't show you how to make the video. We the showed meatloaf. you how to make the redo. So I'm going to do uh, this video on making the meatloaf how I do it. Um, and, and I do it very simple. I do not put breadcrumb and egg. Or ketchup. In my chop meat or ketchup in my chop meat. If I'm putting breadcrumb and egg, I'm making meatballs, guys. Um, I, I, I just spice it and put it in the oven. So this is what we do. Here I have about six pounds of chop meat because I make extra because I want the leftover. Um, I also do some beef seasoning, about, it's one onion, uh, medium size, dice small. I do about a tablespoon and a little bit more of a good steak seasoning. Um, I do about a tablespoon of garlic powder and I do about a teaspoon of white pepper. Um, here I'm adding some celery seed. I do not want to add celery salt. In here I have some cayenne pepper. The celery was about, uh, about a teaspoon. Um, I have some cayenne pepper in here. And some. Oh my god. No, that's not all of it. I, I have... Uh, There's more! No, I have a... Um, um, another ingredient in there. It's... Uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Paprika? No. Uh, Allspice? I'll, I'll think of it, no. Eventually it'll come to him. It'll come to me. Um, at the end of the video. The... You were gonna say that? No. Yeah, by the end of the video. <laughs> so, and then I mix by hand. I do a couple of shots of Worcestershire and all I do is keep mixing. And mixing and mixing. Yes, you want to marry all these flavors right in there, mix them all up, get them going together. Now because I have six pounds of meatloaf, or six chopped meat, turning into meatloaf, it, I have the oven set for 400. At 350, you're about 40 minutes a pound. 400, you're going to be about a half hour, but you cook the temperature. You don't cook the time. So I'm still looking at three three hours with this. And this is still a small meatloaf in this house. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Now, one of the things I do after I feel it's nicely put together here. I take it out of the bowl and I put it in saran wrap. Give me one second. Time first. out. Uh, Always wash your hands after dealing with raw Yeah. And what I do here This is starting to look familiar. 
I, I did this on the ratio, ratio with a piece of steak I marinated and she flipped out. Okay, so what that does is it kind of tightens up. She was amazed. Mm -hmm. She absolutely was. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? We have the actual video mm -hmm. because the clips that she shows, she cut her reaction out. Oh, did she? Yeah. So, but we could show the real reaction. We yeah, we can. To. So, which I may do. Yeah. Right here, you'll probably see Rachel Ray flipping out about what my dad yeah. just did right there. Yeah, she just kind of did, did you see what he just did? Type of thing. And then the applause sign popped up. Um, I do a little oil. Now, look how nice that looks. It looks like a loaf. I am going to pat it down a little bit thinner um, because if I don't, it's going to take six hours to cook. <laughs> so I'm going to make it a little flatter. Even up the surface area. Yeah. You ain't good at this stuff. What? You ain't good at this stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I, I learned from watching. Yeah. So. Okay, so. I'm actually. A little more olive oil. I'm going to put a little more on top because I do. There's one more thing that I do. Um. Now, I did mention that I do not put breadcrumb in the meatloaf. However, I do sprinkle a little on top. Because why not? Um, it gives it that little bit of a crunch. And if you use a panko, this is just a regular seasoned breadcrumb, um, you get more of a crunch. And folks, you could actually crush up some croutons and put it on top of here. It just gives it that nice bite. Or, you know, the garlic bread that we use in the peasant food dish. That's correct. That would probably be real good. Real good. Up. Throw it in the oven, but don't go away yet. I'm going to do one more thing. Um, nutmeg. I have no. No, it wasn't I that. Have, uh, when we come back, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, I always keep a little roux. Done. This is a beef roux in, in my refrigerator. It, it doesn't go bad. It stays. I have some beef stock going here. So basically what I'm going to do is get the gravy working. Um, so this way later on and that's really it. It'll, it'll come to a boil, it'll thicken. And that's it, folks. So we're going to let that cook. I'll see you in a couple of hours. We are back. It's been just about two hours. About a few seconds due to editing magic. Yeah. Yes. Um, we're going to pop the meatloaf. Now, you always cook, like I said, to temp, not time. Um, this is actually a little over 155. This side's going to be, it's a little bit thicker. It's going to be right about there. It's going to get eaten anyway, it don't matter. So what, what we're going to do, what I try to do when I make the meatloaf, as you can see, one side is a little bit thicker than the other. If you check temp on this side and you're good here, this is going to be slightly under. So if you're going to have leftover, you still have a little 
meat to cook, if you will. Um, so what we're going to do here, now you can use the drippings to make gravy. I just made a roux. Turn that big piece. I'm, I'm going to put the gravy on the side so you can actually see the color. How does that meatloaf look on the inside? This, if you could, you could see it. You still have a, a touch of pink to it. Um, a dash of parsley. A dash of parsley. Chili powder. Chili powder was the other ingredient. Yes, that I, I mixed with the meatloaf. Sorry, for some reason I was just drawing a blank before. See, I told you at the end of the video you'd remember. Uh, <laughs> um, and that's it, Zoe. Uh, there's your meatloaf. If you go back to uh, one of the earlier videos, I, I think it's, it says something about all about cheese or say cheese. Say cheese. That basically is a meatloaf redo, mm -hmm. uh, where I slice the meatloaf thin. I make a grilled cheese sandwich uh, from the meatloaf with tomato soup. I made, uh, no, mac and cheese. Was it mac and cheese? With with pieces of meatloaf in there. I could have swore you made tomato soup as well. I don't so, um, well, it goes good with the... Uh, tomato soup, yeah. With the grilled cheese, mm -hmm. the meatloaf grilled cheese. So, there you go. I hope you like what you see. Uh, Zoe, make it. Let me know how you do. Till the next time, uh, like us, share us, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to watch us on Staten Island Community Television. Uh, be safe and good cooking.